Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be looking at my rewards from the most recent Nightmare Games Kickstarter. Gruffy Crow. Okay, uh, yeah, Nightmare Games, they make a range of Chaos and Orc and Goblin miniatures and they've been running a, a few Kickstarters over the last few years uh, with these Kev Adams and similar type sculpts. Now this last one uh, was all about monsters, or more precisely, I should say creatures, because uh, this one was called Creatures Unleashed. And as you can see, this is chapter six, so there has been a few of these Kickstarters before, uh, and I have backed a couple of the other ones as well. Uh, so you can see I pledged for the Nash's Herd, uh, some, some beautiful art here, uh, and this is the Nash's Herd here, and here's some of the other stuff that was available, including these cool armoured goblins. Um, some tr goblin hunters, some crossbows, all really nice old school stuff. And honestly, uh, given all of the money in the world, I'd have got the lot. Uh, but what I did pick up was these bits here, which were just too good uh, to say no to. Uh, so we've got three main bits here. Uh, we'll start with this guy. Never seen anything quite like this, though it does remind me of the goblins from a Labyrinth. Especially putting their little helmet on the mount like that. Uh, and I think he's meant to be some sort of squig herder type character. I'll see if I can fit him in a squig herd. Uh, find a suitable base for him. Then we have some squigs. So I've never really shown them on this channel, but I do actually own a pretty extensive Night Goblin army. And I've got uh, the oldest squigs, or the oldest ones I'm aware of anyway. Uh, and then I've got some of the sort of peak metal squigs from my sort of 2000s era that I like. Uh, and I've even got some of the new plastic ones in both riders and, um, and sort of squig herds. And these are gonna fit in fantastically. They're a bit bigger than some of the one. Look at this guy. His helmet, and these are proper old school, sort of traditional sculpts. Everything about these is beautifully traditional, but they're also fantastically detailed. I mean, look at the uh, grain on his tusks, chainmail, and everything, and they're beautiful, nice, clean casts as well. I can see where the mold line is but it's barely visible. And they've got proper character, absolutely beautiful. Lovely stuff. This one's got like a rat tail and mushrooms growing out of him. And of course some of the oldest ones that I've got already have like rat tails as well, so it's not unheard of. This guy's got a bit of scenic base with him. Like a Cyclops one. Weirdly one with wings, and yeah, the armoured one we've seen. And then, on top of those guys, we have one more. Now, I'm not sure what rules I'll use this guy as, but he was just too awesome to pass up. We've got a pretty stunning giant squig, and this is hollow. Um, as you can see, I've got fairly normal sized hands. And this takes up most of my palm of my hand and it is weighty. It's really got a lot of heft to it and that's only half of it. So all together, yeah, it's got some weight. I'm kind of running out of uh, squares on my board here, but he's sort of, yeah, five, five centimeters square anyway, in sort of every direction. So he's gonna need a, a Nice big base. So talking about bases, I had a route around in my old uh, reclaimed base box. We've got some non-GW ones uh, with these diagonal slots. And then I managed to dig out a whole bunch of uh, square slot ones of varying sort of quality. Now I think all these standard guys will fit on 
20 mil squares without any trouble. So they'll fit in my squeak herds and, and what have you. And I like to put a couple on these sideways bases. Just for a bit of variety. This guy, however, I think is too much of a whopper to sensibly go on a uh, one of these. So I'm going to have to find something a little bit bigger for him, and something bigger for him. And then this guy, initially I was looking to put him on like a cavalry base, uh, so a 50 by uh, 25. Something a bit like this one. Actually, I'm thinking now, what size base does Squig go on? Yeah, they go on 20s, I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, I think he'd look all right on one of these. But as I started to sort of look over the model, I did wonder if he'd go quite nicely on one of these tiny little bases. And then, and then because he's got a bit of height to him, actually, you could still rank up stuff, and he's quite narrow, so you could still rank up the rest of these guys round him quite easily, I think. So then I could use him in a normal squig herd, uh, and he'd really give some sort of height and character to the unit. So I'm going to see if I can get him on one of these. So I'm going to take my uh, needle files, nice flat one. Let me see if I can get these tabs to fit. And that's actually surprisingly stable. So yeah, I'm going to go with that tiny little base for this guy. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'll pop the rest of these guys on one base or another, and we'll see how they look. Oh, uh, and I found a 25mm base for the one that's definitely not going to fit. Though a 40 would make more sense. Oh, I don't know. Well, I've got the 40 out, actually. Maybe the big guy, I was going to put him on this big wooden 50. But if we put him on a 40, which he does fit on, you can then take up the place of four squigs in a herd. Here we go. By putting this guy on the 40, uh, we've got essentially what we've got a squad of 10 there uh, that we can kind of use uh, with another guy that does just about fit on a 20 spare and then this guy who's going to have to go on a 25 at least uh, but it'll be a nice painting project so I don't know what I'll use him as but he is definitely cool. I wonder how much hassle this guy is to put together. He seemed to fit fairly neatly. That wasn't much hassle at all and he's Robust, he's going to need a line of green stuff, I think, though. But that's what I'd kind of expect from any multi part metal model, no matter how simple. I've made another hole in this base. I don't know if that's going to, how well that's going to line up. No, you see, that one's one too far that way. And that one's one too far that way. So annoyingly, this little peg they've included is doesn't quite line up with one of these old GW sort of hole bases. So I'm just going to pop it off. Just file that down. That'll probably be flat enough. I can just be pretty generous with this. To be honest, gravity is doing half the job of keeping this in place. This is. Uh, so I'll get the rest of these glued in and get some sand on them. Okay, we've got some uh, got glued these guys into their slotter bases. And we've popped a little bit of PVA on them. I've cleaned up any mould lines or any little bits of flash that I could see as well. So while they're at the beach, I went and found my tin of green stuff. I'm just gonna cut myself a tiny slither. And basically I'm going to roll this into a sausage and we're going to start at the worst hole which is down here at the very end of it because I think that where all the foot joins is quite neat I think once you've got paint on you won't be able to tell that bit and then I'm just going to start pushing my sausage in there and just moving it along just making sure this whole gap is satisfactorily filled and I'm just stopping there and then starting with this fresh sausage on the other side I'm just going to tuck that end under the horn there and then loop around the back of this foot and we're done these cute little mini squigs sort of spawning off him or her I guess and now I'm going to go in with this rubber tool and I'm going to use this to push the green stuff even further into the gap 
but also to smooth it into the sort of surrounding areas. Because this is quite soft, you can be quite sort of rough with it without doing any damage or so I'm really just pressing this down as much as I can. And on this first pass, I'm not worried about the texture. I'm just worried about blending it in with the surrounding two sides. There we go, something a bit like that. Now I'm gonna go back to the metal tool. I'm just gonna, any bits that I think could be deeper, sort of, I'm gonna try and like carve in to the green stuff, some of the shapes, some of the general pattern to match in. Normally when I'm doing green stuff work, I'm trying to make things as smooth as possible, but in this model, it's actually, actually aiming for something a little bit lumpy. There we go. I'm just trying to match the original sort of sculptor's style and shape. And then around this sort of slightly smoother bit here, I'm just gonna put those sort of skin lines in. And then finally, and we've got the rubber tool again, I'm just gonna knock off some of those sharp marks that I just made just by dabbing this across and there we have it I think that is a filled gap and that should blend in with the rest of the model pretty well once it's painted so this will get the same PVA as the little guys and then into the sand with them as well we'll leave that in a few there a few minutes for that all to sort of conglomerate through to sort of uh, emulsify I think might even be the correct word while I'm getting the excess off these guys. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna have time to uh, get these all fully painted for this video, because I'm working on too many other bits and pieces at the moment. I'm not really focusing on this goblin army. So I'll probably paint most of these normal size guys uh, when I redo my whole goblin force on mass, uh, and I'll probably save the uh, big fella as a bit of a treat for that project as well even though it is quite tempting to try and uh, get some paint on him ASAP. Because once again, he is absolutely stunning. And here they are with the undercoat. Uh, obviously it makes a big difference and you can really appreciate some of the fine detail on these. I've got too much stuff on at the moment to get these all painted. Uh, though I am kind of keen to get some paint on uh, the big fella here. Still can't get over how chunky that is. Uh, but I did spend a few moments and slap some paint on the guy on the weird size base. Uh, fairly basic paint job, just the regular bone colours. I did some pink on his tail there, a few shades of red, and then some metals and washes. And I think that's come out pretty cool. I think you can zoom right in. You can appreciate the uh, sort of level of detail on the skin and around the teeth and on the broken tooth there and the chain mail and everything. A absolutely lovely little figure. So yeah, I'll stick a, a link to the Kickstarter even though it's finished down in the description. Uh, but also check out Nightmare Miniatures. Uh, they've got a range of Orcs and Goblin type stuff, as well as some cool Chaos stuff, uh, which I also own some of. And it's all got that excellent old school vibe that I absolutely love. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.